So here we are again on the Ultimate World Cruise. And today is Wednesday, June 26, 2024. And we are just arriving in Kotar, Montenegro. And the, really the beauty of this area of Montenegro is in the sail in and sail out. And so I made a time lapse of both the arrival and the departure so you can see how beautiful it is. It's like it's like sailing in the fjords of Chile or of Antarctica. It's beautiful. The uh, water this time of year is about 78 degrees. And so this really is a, a seaside resort. And uh, it is almost 100% dependent on tourism. So here is a bird's eye view from way up above as we traveled out of Kotor to go to the old capital of Montenegro. You can see the Serenade of the Seas was off to the right. You'll see it again. There's an airport over to the left, Serenade off to the right in that harbor. And we sailed in around that big mountain in the middle. The Adriatic Sea is over on the left and the entrance to it is kind of the upper left into that uh, passageway around that big mountain. And then you can see Serenade uh, just parked in the harbor there. So we had to we had to take tenders in today to get from the ship on the shore. And so our tour is taking us up over the mountains to the old capital of Montenegro, which is Setenji and then to a seaside resort town called Budva. This intermediate stop was at the top of the mountain up there and I really do forget the name of it. I think it was N J E G U S I. I don't even know how to pronounce it, Nagusi. Anyway, uh, they had a bunch of local souvenirs for sale there and also a period house here this house was supposed to be what a typical montenegrin house might have looked like in the 1800s and i i focused in on the uh meat grinder because we have one exactly like it in our house today that we still use <laughs> i'm gonna there it is right there it's a husqvarna meat grinder So the meat grinder like that that we have at our house came from my grandparents who uh, who immigrated from Serbia in uh, 1919, arrived in the U.S. in 1920. So that uh, family heirloom that we still use to make sausage with. Anyway, at this stop, there was a, uh, a local uh, restaurant where we tried some local bread and cheese, and it was really quite good. It was a nice stop. We hadn't had breakfast before we left the ship in the morning. So uh, we actually bought some of that cheese and some of the ham uh, that they were selling that was made locally. So we brought some of that back to the ship. Okay, our next stop was in Setinji, which was the old capital of Montenegro. And their latest president, who was just elected last year, still lives in this town. Uh, it, uh, he, he tried to explain the history to us uh, and I didn't uh, absorb all of it I just know that the, the most successful king in the history of Montenegro was, was Nicola I and he reigned for almost 60 years uh, he was smart he married off his daughters to the, the heads of state of the neighboring countries so that they didn't have any war for almost 60 years but uh, one of his daughters, he married off to the leader of Serbia, who, as you know, started the uh, First World War with an assassination. So he no fled the country. And, uh, and after that, it was a series of other people. That, uh, it's been a little bit hectic for them, I would say. Anyway, this is a, a typical street there in Satinji. It's a very walkable town. Uh, 
I don't think there's any cars allowed on these streets. Lots of outdoor restaurants. Uh, we stopped in a market and resupplied our snacks and whatnot before we uh, headed out. But there's a lot of history in this town, and it was there's a monastery where the original rulers of Montenegro lived. They, they, originally, it was like a theocracy, and the rulers were the leaders of the local church until such time as Nicola the first uh, took it away from being a theocracy. A very pleasant place, and we, you know we'd have stayed longer. We probably had would have had lunch there or something. But we were on our way up over the mountains to the resort town of Budva, which is on the Adriatic coast. Oh, after a short uh, hike back to the bus, we loaded up and took off over the mountains. And what we noticed about Montenegro was it's, it's very mountainous, much more so than Croatia or... Uh, That's enough. Much more mountainous than Croatia or Slovenia. And so it was very difficult for attackers to navigate the mountains here. This is looking at the town of Budva as we came down out of the mountains into the Adriatic coast. So even though you know, Kotor is on the Adriatic coast, but it's way inland in those uh, inlets that we went through. And you'll see them again as we sail out. But this is right on the Adriatic coast and it's a resort town uh, with a nice beach. Uh, there's an old town here that is that we're going to see in a minute uh, that has some of the oldest ruins uh, of any city we've been to. It's got some stuff from the 6th and 7th century BC. Uh, and I'll, we'll show you that in a minute as we get to the old town. We just walked along the beach here over to where the old town is. Well, like so many of the places in Europe, uh, the old town was a fort. And this fort, I think, was built in the 15th century on a over a place that was that was there from the like the sixth and seventh century BC. So it's a very old place. The Romans had a city here. So as we go inside the old city walls, uh, we'll show you a couple of the places that are uh, very old. I sped things up a little bit. So there's a, a door out the back that goes out onto the beach. So this is a separate beach from the one that I showed you a little while ago. And it's unique to this little old town. And it looked like a pretty nice place to spend some time. Again, the water is quite warm this time of year. It's uh, about 78 degrees. We're going to go back in. There's a foundation that dated back to the 5th and 6th, or 6th, 6th and 7th century BC. And a couple of old churches as well. And there's the remains of a Roman uh, bath that was probably 1st or 2nd century BC. But the water looks nice, it's clear, and looks like it'd be fun to go swimming in or snorkeling or diving. I didn't see any dive shops around, so I don't know why that is. So our guide tried to explain that to us, but I'm saying that it's a monument to the number pi. 
<laughs> if you believe that or not. <laughs> All right, so now the floor underneath this shop right here is the oldest part of that's been excavated under the old city. I'll stick my camera in there and you can see the pillars and part of the floor. So they just made them excavated out and it's the shop has less floor space because they have to preserve this old old stonework down there. There's some pillars and some floor. And the sign is going to tell us the age of it here. Just a minute. Oh, there you go. 7th, 7th and 6th century BC. Sometime in that range. And here's the remains of the Roman thermal uh, bath. And it says 2nd, 1st and 2nd century BC. So pretty old stuff. We don't have anything like that in the United States. There's St. John the Baptist Church, and it was built over something that was, uh, that's maybe, it's maybe 15th century, but built on the foundation of something that's much older. And then the other church here. I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to film inside. And I didn't pick up the date of this the building of this one. But I had to turn my camera off as soon as I got inside because there was a sign that says no photography. Anyway, I'll leave you with this last view of the beautiful Adriatic. And it was a little over an hour drive back to KOTOR. We had to be back on the ship by last tender was 5 o'clock. Gangway up 5.30. And uh, we're actually on our way a little before six. So uh, again, I recorded this time lapse so you can see the fjord like place where this beautiful city is located. The first thing we had to do was back out and turn around 180 degrees before we could head out. So. Uh, how it never ceases to amaze me how they maneuver the ship so well. And our next port in two days is Valletta, Malta. So I'll have another video for Valletta when we get there. Tomorrow's a sea day, so I actually get a day off. It takes about three hours to edit one of these videos and then add the voiceover so it's not a small task. <laughs>